morning and welcome to worship for the fourth Sunday in Advent. We begin with Mary's song of praise, the Magnificat, let us worship God. Mary said, my heart praises the Lord. My soul is glad because of God, my Saviour, for he has remembered me, his lowly servant. From now on, all people will call me happy because of the great things the mighty God has done for me. His name is holy. From one generation to another, he shows mercy to those who honour him. He has stretched out his mighty arm and scattered the proud with all their plans. He has brought down mighty kings from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has kept the promise he made to our ancestors and has come to the help of his servant Israel. He has remembered to show mercy to Abraham and to all his descendants forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise your holy name, you our Lord who keeps your promises, who raises up the poor and humble and uses them to change the world, to surprise of the powerful who found they are not as powerful as they thought. We thank you that you choose ordinary human beings to do extraordinary things, to be changed even as they bring change. We thank you that Mary was brave enough and faithful enough to say yes so that Jesus could be born for us, so long ago now, but renewed in every year that we gather and light our candles of hope. Mary and Elizabeth shared the joy of unexpected motherhood, of lives turned upside down by the touch of God's love. They did what God asked. May we do whatever God asks of us, so that the work of world transformation may go on, and heart by heart, mind by mind, all people might find your touch on their lives and be transformed in the joy of standing in your presence to sing praise and to pray for your will to be done here on earth. May we keep our eyes and hearts open for angels and the light of stars of hope. May we persevere in faith no matter how dark the path, living in the promise of light and restoration which you will keep as you have kept all your promises to all of us, from the shepherd boy who became King David, to Mary and Joseph, and on to each of us. To you be praise and glory, now and forever. Amen. We stop to sing together hymn number 286, Tell Out My Soul.
let's listen for God's word. Our other readings for this morning come first from Psalm 89, verses 1 to 4. O Lord, I will always sing of your constant love. I will proclaim your faithfulness forever. I know that your love will last for all time, that your faithfulness is as permanent as the sky. You said, I have made a covenant with the man I chose. I have promised my servant David. A descendant of yours will always be king. I will preserve your dynasty forever. And in the second book of the prophet Samuel in chapter 7 at verse 1. King David was settled in his palace and the Lord kept him safe from all his enemies. Then the king said to the prophet Nathan, Here I am, living in a house built of cedar, but God's covenant box is kept in a tent. Nathan answered, Do whatever you have in mind, because the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord said to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David that I say to him, You are not the one to build a temple for me to live in. From the time I rescued the people of Israel from Egypt until now, I have never lived in a temple. I have travelled around living in a tent. In all my travelling with the people of Israel, I never asked any of the leaders that I appointed why they had not built me a temple made of cedar. So tell my servant David that I, the Lord Almighty, say to him, I took you from looking after sheep in the fields and made you the ruler of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have defeated all your enemies as you advanced. I will make you as famous as the greatest leaders in the world. I have chosen a place for my people Israel and have settled them there, where they will live without being oppressed any more. I promise to keep you safe from all your enemies and to give you descendants. And we read from Luke's Gospel. Luke chapter 1 at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message, and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I'm a virgin, how then can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth. It said she cannot have children, but she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old, for there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. Amen. May God add his blessing to these readings from his holy word. To his name be praise and glory. God's promises are always kept, but not always in the ways that the people the promises were made to expected them to be kept. For God has plans that we do not understand. Often it takes generations to realize, generations for realization to dawn, because human beings often make mistakes about God. We expect God to behave in the same way as human beings because we are made in the image of God. But God is not exactly like us. We are like God. Just as children may look like their parents but live totally different lives, so we may find our concept of God to be in conflict with our experience. 
There is a constant war going on between the human social behaviour and ethics and the expectations of what will please God. No more so than in the way that God kept his promises to David. Generations passed after the time when God took Jesse's shepherd boy son and made him king of Israel. Generations when the descendants of David became king and then lost their kingdom to conquest or to trouble. Years of exile, years of rebuilding. The world of men, warfare and politics failed to keep the promise in the way historically expected. And then God sent an angel to visit a young woman in Nazareth. And until Gabriel's visit, Mary was exactly the same as any young woman moving into her adult life, looking forward to marriage and a house of her own to run. Gabriel's message was just as unexpected as Gabriel was himself. It turned Mary's expectations of her life upside down. Yes, she had expected to have children, but not quite yet. Yes, she believed in the promises of God, but she did not expect to have any part in their working out. An angel in her kitchen was totally unexpected, but Gabriel had been busy. He had also visited Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, while he was performing his duties in the temple. Elizabeth was related to Mary, and now both of them were pregnant with babies that will fulfil the promise of God. Mary set off to visit Elizabeth, and it was only there, in the company of the other expectant mother, that the reality of what had happened and of what she had agreed to hit Mary. Rather than a bit of a panic, which might have been expected in the circumstances, Mary broke into a song of praise, an outpouring of prophecy and understanding, a song which has come down to us in the words of Luke's Gospel. Words that speak of a world turned upside down, of promises kept and the lowly lifted up, of the rescue of God's people in mercy and love. The plans of the powerful scattered to the wind and God's plans born on earth in a baby who would save his people. Every bit as unexpected and unlikely as his ancestor David, the shepherd boy who became king. This baby would grow to become the Messiah. God took the ordinary and transformed it. The ordinary miracle of pregnancy became the vehicle of transformation for all of us. The only person in the story as yet unconfronted and unconsulted was Joseph. Gabriel had another visit in his diary because Joseph, descendant of David, was a God-fearing, ethical man who would not understand this pregnancy that he had had nothing to do with. The safety of the Saviour depended on Joseph's ability to trust in God and in his betrothed Mary's word. Joseph is the part with no voice in this story. Descendant of David, he was the hinge of the door that allowed Christ to come into the world in the natural way of the world in those days, the words of prophecy should have been his. The power of the promise should have been his. But God had done it differently. And Joseph was asked to have more faith and trust than any man was asked for before. He was the descendant of David, and from his name would come Jesus' security while he grew up and his authority as the promised Messiah the ruler promised by God, who would do far more than any ordinary descendant of King David. On this Sunday we mark the moment when all the pieces were set upon the board and God took the riskiest move of all, leaving them exposed to the world. God trusted Joseph and Mary, Zechariah and Elizabeth to do their part so the promise could be kept so that all of us, who now count as the people of Israel, would have our King and Saviour, whose words would transform us and through us the world. 
The transformation is still underway and each of us is asked to commit ourselves to the process of promise keeping in our time and place. As the year loops back to Bethlehem, we are confronted once more with the audacity of God's plan in all its riskiness. If any one of these people had refused to do their part, if there had been a disaster on the way to Bethlehem, the angels would have had tears instead of songs to give to the shepherds outside the town. The universe held its breath until Mary said yes, until Joseph got over his expectations, until Zechariah saw Elizabeth give birth to John, until the star shone over Bethlehem on the night when the Messiah was born in David's town. Now the world holds its breath every Christmas Eve to see the promise renewed as we give our hearts to the work still to be done. May God give us the strength and the faith to walk the way of the promise until his kingdom comes and the whole promise is fulfilled forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of the universe, promise keeper, lighter of the stars of hope, in the darkest time of the year and in our present darkness of pandemic restrictions, we come to pray for a whole world, for those who will not see Christmas, who are dying from this virus and from all the other diseases and illness that threaten human life. We remember those who are watching anxiously and praying for miracles. We pray for those working to save lives in hospital and surgeries across the world, for those who are developing more vaccines and producing them in world-sized quantities. 
We pray for those who are working to keep things going in shops and schools, in fire stations, police stations and ambulance stations, rescuing those in trouble. We pray for those who govern us, trying to make impossible decisions in difficult times. Give them courage and compassion and wisdom, we pray. Across the world, as we all reach for hope, we pray that you will raise up promise keepers to rule us and prophets to sing the songs of how things could be if your promises are allowed to live in human experience and hearts. We remember those of our own place who are sick, who are worried, who are struggling to go on, who are mourning and in pain. May the light of your star touch their hearts and lighten their nights with hope. We pray for everyone whose Christmas plans are in ruins. May they find comfort in your promises coming to birth in spite of expectations, in spite of occupiers, in spite of the powerful, in spite of all our human misunderstanding. Bring us all, Lord, to Bethlehem in wonder and in awe, to see your promise born as a baby, laid in a manger, to hear the angels singing and to find that song in our own hearts. In the name of the one who grew up to keep your promises and who taught us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God's promises kept find its place in your heart and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and for evermore. Amen. Oh, yeah.